morning pot pickers, you vegetastic people, you crazy diamonds scattered globally around the world. Welcome back to the channel. It's only me again, Sean from Happy Days Veg. So, big hello to the existing subscribers and thanks for some of the lovely comments and uh, things you wrote about some of my videos recently. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And you find me here on what can only be described it's not raining now, but it's been raining all morning. So while it's been raining, I've been hanging wall, I've been hanging wallpaper in the house. So you'll have seen yesterday's video, I think it was, talking about harvesting rainwater. And even though I've done this video before in the past, I just want to do a quick one again for those of you who are new to the allotments and are thinking about harvesting some rainwater or you might have had it on your mind for a while you might be wanting to harvest it off your house for your flower beds or your veg beds or jet washing the car or jet washing anything dirty you know that's what i use the rainwater for because it's you know yeah it's not perfectly clean to drink but i don't think it'd kill you if you drank the water coming out of this container so let's have a quick rundown i've tried to strategically position the camera so you can see i don't know whether you can see I don't know whether you can see this black pipe coming in here. Yeah, if you, if you can't, that is just where the water comes in, into this level of this IBC container. Now, and it comes off the shed roof through some filters and it comes into there. But I can only fill up up to there. So I can only store about 600 litres of water in this bottom container because I've got it as high as I can it's a compromise as high as I can to get this one high as I can because I don't really want to put a third one on the top because it's too high. So the filtered rainwater comes off the shed roof and it goes into this bottom IBC, IBC container around the back. When it fills up, if I don't do anything about it, it just naturally overflows and that's fine. But now I need a way of getting the water from that tank into this tank because this is the tank I rely on the most to give me the head pressure and the water to go down this blue pipe. Yeah, there's the water there. Look, you'd think that was connected to a tap. Just let me move this one out of the way. Yeah. You'd think that was connected to the tap, but it's just coming out the bottom of that IBC container. And from here, it is, it's more or less, give or take, 50 metres, now I don't know whether you can see, 50 metres down this blue pipe and it goes all the way down, 50 metres down the fence. Stopping off at strategic points to give me a connection to plug in a hose pipe. And also, it's not connected yet, but my self-watering system for my potatoes comes off this pipe there. And it goes down to where that old IBC container was, the one that fell over in the high wind. And then it goes all the way down to nearly where my new composting station is. And there's a tap at the end. And that's the tap I use to fill up the IBC containers at the back of the polytunnel. So let's follow this pipe down and let's see where it takes us. And the reason for this is I emptied up most of these containers in this blue pipe and drained all the water off for the winter months. But it's getting to the stage where I need to test my new self-watering system in the polytunnel that I've done. And for that, I need some water. So let's go further down the pipeline and see where it takes us. And I'm sorry about the background noise of the wind because it's very windy today too. So some there, 50 yards, 50 meters up there in the distance, you'll see the two black IBC containers and I'll try and put a circle around them so you, to give some some perspective on where they are in relation to where I am now. So the water comes down this blue pipe and I've just put this new brass tap in. It's not brand new, it's second hand from last year because the plastic one broke so I've put this this other one in because the other one was cheap Chinese rubbish so I'm going to buy some new ones. So there I don't know why, there's the water coming out the tap. Hope you can see. Just let me check what you can see. But right, I don't know whether you can see, but I'm not going to move the camera just to show you water coming out of a tap. And up there, 
just to the right of that IBC container, you'll see the blue pipe going into the ground. But actually there's two. One's the water supply going into the shed, which I'm gonna show you now. And the other one is a ducting to take the armored cable to take the electricity power supply into the end of the polytunnel, which gives me electricity in there uh, for the supply and extract fans in the polytunnel. So here we are at the back of the polytunnel. I've got two IBC containers here and two just over there out of sight uh, on the other side of the uh, back of the polytunnel. These two supply the water to that side of the self-watering system and those two supply the water for that side of the self-watering system and also the bottom one there, I've got a special pipe connected to my jet wash pump which gives me water to water the rest of the vegetable beds and everything else I've got outside up to, uh, up to 25 metres from there. Right then, I've just come inside the polytunnel and those two IBC containers I was just standing next to are just on the other side of that wall. I'm, I'm installing all brand new hoses and all brand new hose lock fittings. So the water from those IBC containers comes in here and it goes into there. And in there, there's a, a float valve like you get in an old toilet system, low, a low pressure one, because it's running off gravity. That's constantly open. The water fills up. And then when the float valve rises to the right level, it turns the water off perfectly. And then this hose will connect onto there and inside there is one of those little float valves that I've showed you before but I'm going to show you it again and then that controls the water level and the water flow into this side of the self watering system so let's get on you've all seen this part of the self watering system you can go back into the old videos if need be I might try and put a link up to one of the videos but I'm going to take you up there now and I'll show you exactly what I've done on the new extension of the self-watering system. Right then, here we are. It's 95% complete because I'm still not 100% sure of the planting configuration I'm going to have across these tubes. Now the bottom pipe is one that's been extended from the original system so the holes are already drilled in the self watering system. This is the old strawberry pipe which needs repairing underneath there because it's got a hole in there from where it hung from the ceiling. So I'm going to repair that later today. There's a back row there of buckets which need to be drilled out once I figure out the configuration. Here, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to keep this, this actual particular pipe. I think I'm going to buy another one because this is a second hand one. I think I'm going to buy another one so I can have these pots closer together because these are for salad leaves yeah, and lettuces and things like that. Now they're never going to grow massive. They'll always be picked and swapped over. What we don't eat off the one plant will be fed to the chickens and some of, some of them will be cut and come again and also I'm doing an experiment with this, I don't know whether you can see it, I hope you can see it, this experiment on this aeroponics system, which is going to have a little pump, pumping the water out the self-watering system, up over the top and back down, and I'm hoping to try and grow some lettuces and things in there, but that's an experiment. If that works well, this is what this pipe's here for, because I've got the facility to turn this one into another one of them, because I've, got, I've made two heads. The water will be coming down that one, as well as this one, even though this one's not doing nothing, because it's going to help put oxygen into the water, into this self-watering system. So the hydroponic, the aeroponic system is a video for another day. So let's just crack on with this self-watering system. So, you know that I use one of those, those small float valves, which I've just showed you down there, and I should have a... Have I got one here? Yes, bear with me. So if you look at this, this is an end cap, a screwed end cap that fits in the end of that pipe. I've drilled through, 
with a plastic, uh, with a metal cone drill bit, and I fitted one of those little float valves. And as you can see, when that valve gets up to there, the water is more or less halfway filling up the bottom of the pipe. Hence the reason these cups go down and the bottom of these containers, as in all the containers on this self-watering system, and there's going to be 50, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, uh, uh, 50, 60, 70, there's going to be nearly 90 containers on this whole self-watering system, not counting these lettuce ones. So these will sit perfectly in there, and I'll put, I'll put a photograph up if need be. I've just drilled a, 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 a hole with a hole saw in there. Those just happen to sit in there perfectly, sealed, and I'll put the lettuce plant in there, and it'll just suck the water up as and when, and the liquid fertiliser, nutrients that are put in there, organic stuff. It can suck it up as much as it likes, as much as it likes completely. As the water level drops, as, as the water level, the water level is going to be here, as the water level drops, the valve opens and lets water in through this hose pipe. And here's the tricky bit. You've got to get the water from the top IBC container up by the shed, which is 50, 50, nearly, to get to here, it's nearly 60 metres, maybe 65, because it's got to go up and over. It's a long way for the water to come. But I wanted to have some control over how I can control the flow of water into this, into this tube and into that tube, because I've had, today, I've had, a nice delivery from Marshalls and I'm gonna I'll, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you what's in there because I'm gonna do another video on there but whatever's in there is gonna be planted in these new uh, da, 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 seven and a half litre plant pots and they'll be going into that self-watering system too but I want to be able to have the ability to turn the water on and off to give you maximum control so the bottom two rows are fed from the existing system, which is fed from the IBC containers down there. But this tube, that tube, and I hope you can see it, this high level white pipe there, there's two of them, one there and one over there. I'm hoping to get the water fed by gravity from the high level up by the shed down here, it comes in at just below waist height and then the water comes through a hose pipe up here look I mean I, I because that I'm five foot ten that's got to be seven foot tall easy slightly more the, hopefully there's enough pressure for the water to come down this pipe and into this hose lock manifold now before I'll let you know now I've I've paid hard earned money for these hose lock pipes and fittings. I'm not sponsored by them, but if hose lock are out there, anybody from hose lock out there watching and they want to send me some freebies to test anything to do with gardening and pressure washing and anything like that, I'm your man. So, I diversify. So, hopefully, the water from my top IBC container will come down into this hose lock fitting there. And you, everywhere there's a, a, a bend and there's a possibility of a kink, I've put one of these O's lock fittings that's got a, 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 an anti-kink connection on the back. So the water comes into that manifold. As it stands, I've got a spare one there. And then it leaves three more. So this one goes round and serves this tube. The next one goes up, up and over, and down and serves the opposite tube. And then this third one goes up, and I know you can't see it, but I will put a picture up on the screen of this, uh, this twin splitter. 
then that way I can turn these taps on. There's nothing in there at the moment. I can turn these taps on and hopefully the water will go up these hoses in and come through the pre-drilled holes that I've put in because up, up here there's going to be some red and yellow tumbling tom tomatoes which I've never grown before and that's why they're up there. I wanted to maximise and utilise the height I've got in this tunnel and I've got these tubes off my neighbour so I've made these uh, uh, little flower troughs but they needed watering and I needed an easy way to water it so I'm hoping I'm going to have enough water pressure from my IBC container up by the shed to push all the water down through and up to this height I'm, I'm sure it'll do this one up to this height but I'm not convinced it's going to do that height and then I've drilled a hole in that pipe roughly every six inches then missed the gap where there's going to be no plants and then it carries on down there and I've had to extend it and I've put a I've put a, 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 an M, a 20 mil MDPE medium density polyethylene end cap on there so I'm hoping that will assist me in watering those tomatoes easily. I admit that your tomato is going to need some tomato feed. So basically every week all I'll do is I'll just, I'll just uh, water them with a, a tomato feed and, and I'll just use my step ladders. But that's only once a week if needed. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is as it stands. I'm over the moon with the way this is looking, but it's no good if the water doesn't come out of those top holes. I'm sure the water's gonna come into this tube, but I wanna make sure it comes out of there. So there's only one way to do it. First things first is, you could be saying to yourself now, oh, I know, Sean, you've already tested it and you know it works. You're just building up the jeopardy. Well, I'm not, because here's the rub. There's the supply pipe. That's bone dry. And if I'd tested this one, well, any of them, there, there would be water coming out of that pipe. Look, dry. I nearly said a rude sign then. Dry as a bone, as we say in these parts. So what I have done is I filled up the top IBC container with water the other day because I want to fill up the IBC containers, get them ready for the season because I, I emptied them all. And we're having hell of a lot of rain, so now's the time to top them up. So I've filled the top one up, and I'm pretty sure the bottom will be filled now because it's been raining all night and all morning. I've fitted the tap at the end, I've bled the air, or 99% of the air, out of that 50 metres, 60 metres of pipe. So all I've got to do now is turn the tap on there and hopefully the water will come up, come across, and it will come into there. Yep. But it won't go anywhere else because these are closed. So let, let's do that. So then, I've turned the water on and this new hose pipe will obviously be full of air. So what I'm hoping to do is this. I'm hoping that when I turn this tap on there, I've disconnected this so you can see. As you can tell, this one's bone dry, it's had no watering. I'm hoping that when I turn this tap on, you'll hear some air come out first and then the water will come out. So wish me luck, seriously, this is the first time I've done it because this is bone dry. So you can hear the air come in. So that's a good sign. Oh my life. Look at that. Let's turn that off. Oh my life. That was fun. I can't believe that water flow. Because that water is coming up over my head. It, it comes under the... It goes... It actually comes under the ground, outside by the polytunnel. So it's gone under the ground, up, up to you know, we're at seven foot, up and down to there. Absolutely unbelievable. Right, 
Now, as I say, this pipe has got a hole in, so I don't want to do this one. But what I want to do is track, trace this pipe back, so that's this one, which is the middle one. And I want to see if, I want to see if the water, in fact, I don't want to do the door shut. What I want to do is this. Hang on, stay there. Bear with me, kids. Oh, it's too hard to take out. Because I haven't got the holes in there, you won't be able to see the water. So I will do this one. I will do this one. So I'm going to turn this one on. And this will put water into there. And I will be able to see the water coming in there. And also, once the water starts dribbling, the water should start dribbling out of this hole there. Just let me see you, Let me see if you can see that hole. Right, just let me turn the camera. Right, I'm back. So, sorry, I just had to alter the camera. So, I've got my little access hatch there. And what you do, you, you use a piece of the plastic as a cap to cover over. So... I'm just interested now, have I got enough pressure to force its way through these little shut-off valves? So if I open this... Oh my love, can you hear the air? Oh, the water's coming through. Look, any second now, you'll see the water coming out of there. You watch. Come on. Can you hear it? Absolutely fantastic. Let me turn that water off because I don't want to waste it. Absolutely. Oh, I can't tell you how happy that's made me. But the big question is, when I turn the other one on, will I get water out of these high level ones? Let's rearrange the camera and let's let's this is the this is the big one now. This is this is the make and break. Because if water don't if water doesn't come out of that top one by gravity. I'm going to end up watering those strawberries by hand, and that's not the plan. So you probably can't see me. Can you see me? I don't know if you can see me. I'll turn... At the moment, these two are off. The right-hand one goes to those two flower troughs. The left-hand one goes to those two. So this comes down there, and it goes to there. So those are off. Let me turn that on. Now, as I say, this is... I'm scared. Please work. I'm going to turn this on. And admittedly, this hose, this hose and that pipe is full of air. So hopefully you might hear some air come out the pipe. And then I'm hoping to see if the water will come out. But what I need is a stick. Bear with me. So, can you see... There, there's a hole there, there's a hole there, there's a hole there. So I'm hoping, it's going to be hard to see because it's only going to be, it's, that's only an, a one eighth hole I think. Or is it, I don't know. You won't see much water coming through but I'll zo try and zoom in. So keep your eye on that. This is, this is it now. This is where it's make or break. So let me turn that on. Can you hear the gurgling? Listen. Oh my life. Let me see. Can, can you see? I don't know whether you can see. Bear with me. I've got to try and prove that there's water coming out. Can you hear the water? Have I got a cup? A jar? Anything? Right. Look, can you see me, kids? It's working absolutely. Can you hear? Perfect water flow. Look, can you see? Look. Oh, perfect. Well, you can see the water dripping through. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic.
can you hear the water dribbling out the bottom? Out the, out the sides? Yeah, that's not a problem. The reason why that water is dribbling out the sides is because there's no, there's no, there's no soil or compost or plants in there. But look, just to prove I'm getting water. Absolutely fantastic, because what you do, once those are fully planted up with your tomato plants, you just water it once a week, maybe twice a week in the height of the summer, and you just saturate it until the water just drips out the bottom. Then you know you've got plenty of water in there. But that is putting water across there every six inches, and I thought I really that would have to make a bigger hole. But them holes, just a guess, have worked out perfectly. The pressure's fantastic. Let's let's try the other one. Why am I? Just let me try the other one. Right, which one is it, Sean? Turn it on. Can you see the other one? I don't know. Can you see the water coming out up there? And you can hear the water pressure building up as the air is expelled out the pipe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Out of this world. What a fantastic system. What a fantastic system. As I say, the end, these ends are not watertight and I don't want watertight. I want excess water to be able to drain out so you know that you've watered and you've saturated your plants enough because they're tomato plants and they need a lot of moisture. I'm over the moon. I'm going to go and celebrate with a cup of tea because I think you'll find, ladies and gentlemen, this is a raging success. I, can't, I couldn't have wished for anything better. So while I'm having a cup of tea, I'm going to go and turn this tap on to this water bottle. I'm going to take some photographs and this water bottle that you can't see here, which is just a spare one that I use for topping up my watering can or swilling my hands. Uh, I've got a nice hose lock connection on there. I've took off the tap up by the house. All the new connections, all these are new. Fantastic. This will work perfectly. So, there's a picture, of, hopefully there's a picture of this, not fully completed, not like this, but there's a picture of this in Grow Your Own magazine, which is out on the 23rd of this month. And I'm hoping that the picture in the magazine will send a few people over so they can watch this video and they can see what you can see, but you saw it first. That's a proper real-time experiment. And I'm over the moon. Happy days. I'll see you guys later. Oh. I love you. It's confirmed. The man is a genius.